Welcome to Sar Trail. Back at Psyker Fabrication in Colorado Springs, you saw us here working on the Turtleback trailer, getting that thing really amazing. And now we're getting some much needed work done on the Hummer H3. There's some projects on this thing that have been on the back burner for a couple years now. Um, if you can kind of see, it's a bit taken apart. It's a bit different, a bit changed. This worn winch we have, I've had that winch for a couple years now and just haven't been able to put it on yet. But now we got a new bumper, new winch, new of a lot of different things. So what I'm gonna do is kind of walk around, show you everything that's going on here to date. Some really cool mods, some really cool bolt-ons, some really cool fabricated parts. And we're taking this thing really to the next level, the next level of overlanding, not necessarily rock crawling, um, but overlanding, and that's kind of our goal. So let's take a look. Okay, back side of the H3, right here, if you recall what the underneath side of your H3 looks like, you got a muffler that hangs down right here. Well, that's gone now. This is now an auxiliary fuel tank, which is going to have a filler over here on the corner of the passenger, I'm sorry, the driver's side bumper. And it'll hold approximately 12 gallons, and then you, it'll have a pump, and then it'll pump back into the main tank. So you can just hit a switch and your main tank gets low, throw in your fuel and bring the level back up on your main tank. So auxiliary fuel tank, exhaust has been rerouted right over here to the side. There's a smaller muffler and a better, better than stock, better flowing than stock muffler that's over here. Uh, that'll show you in a second. Uh, and also the transmission cooler is mounted in the back under here. There was no room with the supercharger and the intercooler and all of that stuff no room to put the transmission cooler up front. So we put it under here with a couple fans mounted on it to keep it, keep the air flowing through it. So this is something I've been super excited about. You know, the H3 holds, I think it's 23 gallons of fuel, which isn't a lot, especially when you're traveling on like the Mojave Road, someplace that you're gonna be out away from gas stations for days, you could run out of fuel pretty easily. So we've added some more fuel here. That's just a necessity for the way we'd like to travel and then also getting some better flow and probably some better sound. Right now, this engine can't be turned on yet because we still have some things to do with the transmission and the programming and there's no transmission fluid in it yet. So I haven't been able to hear what it sounds like, but I think it's gonna sound pretty awesome. But this is something we've wanted to do forever. There's a bunch of things on here we wanted to do, to do forever that I've been really excited about and that's one of them. Okay, right under here, you can see the MagnaFlow stainless steel muffler. And right next to it are, is the transmission cooler. You can see the fans there with the shroud around it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the muffler in uh, like a heat shield, just in case we're on a trail and we're doing half a mile an hour and it's 100 degrees outside, just to keep the heat from coming from the muffler and affecting the transmission temperatures. But with these fans here, these are supposed to pull a tremendous amount of air. So I think our, our transmission's gonna be great and uh, we're not gonna really see those heated up transmission problems that a lot of guys see when they're out on trails. So a couple of things I don't really have ready to show yet, but we're putting in S-Pod. S-Pod is a company. We bought this at one of the Overland Expos. S-Pod makes, I'm sorry, S-Pod makes like a eight switch, one touch screen panel that you can control eight different electronic devices. And we're gonna use it for lights, for bunch of other different things. Fuel pump for the auxiliary fuel tank, different things like that. So a bunch of different things are gonna get used. This bumper here, we're gonna take that and these pieces are not put, bolted on yet, but they're gonna get these rigid lights put into them. So it's an amber street legal fog light that we're gonna put on each side of the bumper. Really looking forward to that. You guys know the Hummer H3 doesn't have the greatest uh, lights. The headlights are weak. We're re replacing these headlights for rigid industry headlights. So we're going to put rigid industry LEDs here. These are the rigid lights here. These are the ones that go for the, I think it's a Toyota Tacoma, but we're going to use them here because they don't make any for the Hummer H3 and certainly they don't, they don't make any for the, an aftermarket bumper for the Hummer H3. So looking forward to those. Also, third brake light. We got one of these factory third brake lights to replace in the back because ours is burnt out for a couple years and we wanted to get that guy in and just have more light, even though most of the time we're gonna be pulling a trailer, but still wanna get all the light we can back there. Also getting done is a new rear bumper. That rear bumper is gonna have these flush mount rigid lights. 
they're going to be on the S pod as well. Just punch those when we're backing up into campsite. If we want to really blow it up and make sure we can see everything, we're going to punch those in. The rear bumper is going to be really cool. It's going to be an aftermarket. It's also going to have a swing away tire carrier. It's also going to have a, a neck, a fuel filler neck that comes up through it on the driver's side to fill up that auxiliary tank. Going to be super cool. You know, just kind of making some really practical upgrades to the Hummer itself. Okay, so another thing that we're doing underneath the rear, right above the axle, there's going to be a 135 amp hour Dakota lithium battery. That's going to run a freezer that's going to run in the back of here. Um, also run a couple other accessories. And for that, we bought this Victron. It's a battery monitor and it's wireless. So you just use the app on your phone and then you can just hop on and see if you're charging, see what your battery status is, see how much battery you have left. Really good thing because the a lot of the batteries, a lot of the lithium batteries don't have an app built in and we didn't want to go with a whole battery monitoring system, just something really simple. And this is going to do the trick. All right, so we're back down at Syker Fabrication in Colorado Springs. Progress has been made on the H3. Got a little update of what we're doing. So we're putting in some front diff fluid. Got some royal purple here. Got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of ATF for the new transmission. We also have, you're going to see a high output alternator that just came in. So we'll get that guy mounted up. Let's take a look at what's been done on the H3 so far. Some stuff we've been wanting to do for ever. And now we're getting it done. So it's really exciting. So take a look and see. So rigid industry headlights right here. These things are super, super bright. Um, they act as a daytime running light and then also your regular lights and your high beams. So pretty cool setup there. Got these new lights right here. We'll kind of show you something that's unique about these here in a little bit. Um, but these are really great. These also act like a daytime kind of marker light, running light. And then they're also your regular marker lights. <laughs> got the new marker lights on the side here. These are super cool. They got like three bars on them. They look really, really cool. Also up on the top, these lights are not installed yet because we're getting some touch up paint where the Gobi rack air deflector had rubbed the paint off. Uh, so we're gonna touch up that paint before those go on there, but those roof marker lights, since the day we bought this thing, I've been wanting to get those lights. So really excited about that. And then come check out here on the bumper. So right in here, we got the rigid industry amber lights put into this bumper. This is part of the Thor parts bumper that's been all cut down to make it much more aggressive looking. And then this opened up to mount in those rigid industry amber fog lights. These I'm really excited about, you know, the, the whole headlight system factory on the H3 is really, really weak. Um, we've never liked the headlights. So now we got some seriously bright headlights, got some really great fog lights. So I think everything looks really, really good. This bumper and the other pieces that are not mounted on yet that are going to go in, this is all going to go get powder coated. So this all looks really nice. Then the winch will be uh, permanently installed and then wired up. So that's going to look really great as well. Then what we also have to do is that splash guard, your first kind of forward rock slider. We got to get one of those custom built here as well, because the factory one doesn't work from here. And if you recall from our supercharger video, when we supercharge this thing, the guys that did that install cut a big old hole in that splash guard for the transmission cooler, which now the transmission cooler is way in the back, much better location. So the factory splash guard could be modified to fit this, but now it's got a big hole in it. So we're just gonna start from scratch again and make a whole new one. All right, so another thing, the transmission, that L6L80 that we got didn't come with like a fill tube, dipstick, one of these. So we ordered one of these. This is gonna go in because the one from the stock transmission doesn't bolt up and fit. So we have this, thankfully, because if not, the filler was going to like to check and fill your transmission fluid. You're going to have to go down below and this just kind of makes sense. I don't know why it wasn't with the kit. Should have been. But that's a nice piece right there. We're going to get on. Also, let me show you what's going on on the inside. Some really cool things. Okay, so another thing we've been wanting to do for a really long time is to put a communication bar up here. So this is the bar that's going to be mounted here. It's solid on here. We're going to powder coat it. This is made out of steel, bent to match the shape of the dash up here, which was not the easiest thing to do. 
Uh, on this is going to go an S-Pod, so we can control a lot of our electronics. Uh, this gauge that we got from J&S Performance when they did the supercharger is going to get mounted on here as well. Uh, also, we're going to mount on a tablet, mounts for radios, um, Garmin, GPS, anything that we want to can mount on this. It goes all the way across the entire dash. So, man, that's something that this is like a SAR Trail original. We didn't buy this on a kit. This is a fabrication, kind of a combined, like a collaboration between my friend Cameron and from Psycho Fabrication here to finish it off and kind of really get the finishing touches on it. But man, this thing is going to be super sweet. It's going to hold all of our stuff up here instead of us, you know, just with cords and wires and piles of radios and phones and tablets just sitting on the very small Hummer H3 center console. So that's pretty cool here. And then also up here in here is going to be a multi-power port. So it's going to have four USB charging ports right here. See if you can see them. And that's going to be so all this stuff can get charged so we don't have cables just hanging over the dash and just making it look messy. So that'll be a nice cleaner setup. Another thing we did is we have this new mirror in here. This is the mirror out of a Hummer H2 because the one with the Hummer H3 used to have the slide on it that slid out here for the little uh, monitor. So when you throw it in reverse, the monitor goes and it slides out of the side. And that thing eventually just broke. It went bad. So now this one has the monitor built in here inside the screen. So when you throw it in reverse, it kicks on and shows your backup camera right in here. And then we have a rear view mirror that actually functions again because the other one just didn't work anymore. This one looks really good. It's been slightly modified and upgraded so that it fits the H3. The glass on it has been upgraded so it's better than the factory glass. So looking really forward to seeing that thing work as well. Okay, another thing we're doing, this one was something that Natalie had to, it was one of her things. You know, we kind of all have our, our build ideas. Well, this was hers, and this is her, like, this one's got to be done type of thing. So, in the back here, still in the works here, but you can see this is all aluminum. We're going to have a large clothing drawer here, another large clothing drawer here, a drawer up here for camera gear, another kind of gear that will go up into this drawer, and then also right here is a fridge freezer. Well, actually it's a, it's gonna be a freezer for us. So this is a National Luna uh, Smart 40 liter fridge. And with this custom made tilting, how about that? That's pretty cool, right? And then here we have our freezer right here. So inside our trailer, we're gonna use the Snowmaster uh, Expedition 85, it has two compartments. We're going to use that both as a refrigerator. Then we're going to use this as our dedicated freezer. So I'm really excited about this. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Sorry, just saw it for the first time today, seeing how it works. Oh, the handle. you got to keep the handle down in the back. Mm. <laughs> So yeah, we're looking really forward to this. This is gonna be great. We're actually gonna be able to keep our clothing in drawers instead of in duffel bags or things that are just mildly better than a duffel bag. And then this is gonna get all carpet coated, carpet covered, just with some of that, like you, if you build in a speaker box for the back of your car, that kind of carpet, just nice thin black stuff that's gonna wrap all around it. It's gonna help keep it more quiet and it's just gonna look better than just having a bunch of aluminum back there. So if you can see on this box, it's all aluminum down here is steel, the very bottom, where it uses the four factory cargo locations where like you have cargo straps, these old kind of like, not really D shackles, but they're more triangular, I think. So there's four points in the cargo area of the H3 that this is mounted to it. So it's mounted directly down to the H3 itself. So this thing's not going anywhere. It's gonna be rock solid. The fridge is gonna be mounted from the bottom. It's gonna screw in from the bottom. The National Luna, pretty cool thing it has is these feet on it. And with those feet, you can just screw right into the bottom of those and then lock this thing into place. We don't have the straps we have to worry about. Just, you know, with those straps that most of the places use, most of the fridges, you know, this kind of like pull down tension straps, but they come loose after time. These aren't ever gonna come loose. So it's gonna be really secure, really solid. Another thing we've done here is upgraded the rear lights. This is just like an Amazon purchase. I don't think anybody else has really got them too much, but you know you can get anything off an Amazon these days, but 
I think that's a really nice LED bright upgrade. All right, so another thing we're gonna do, this thing sat at the transmission shop where we're waiting on parts and just a bunch of stuff. It sat there, went through hail storms, went through all kinds of weather. It sat there for like half a year, maybe longer. And then it sat in another yard for another couple months. So it's been sitting. So it's covered with pine needles. It sat underneath a pine tree, so it's got pine sap all over it. So we're gonna start now to try to start cleaning that pine sap off of it. So we got some alcohol and some rags and things we're gonna to try to clean it with. And it'll be a process to get it all the way clean. And eventually this thing's gonna go in and get repainted. But we really wanna delay that for a year or two because in all, it's in really, really good shape. It's really dirty. The dents on it are just from hail. The scratches on it are from when our awning busted one time out in Utah. So it's really minimal. We've done a really good job taking care of it, but it needs some TLC today. And then we'll take a couple of days to actually get it done. But let's get started. All right, so we got pine tar all over the roof here. So we're gonna to try to get it. What I've read is you can use this rubbing alcohol and we'll see how that does. It's supposed to not harm the paint. So we can always get a little bit of water and kind of wipe this thing down after. I don't know how much you put on. I think it has to soak for a little bit to kind of break down that pine sap. So that's what we'll do because it's really a lot. This thing sat for so long. So, you know, it is what it is. We're going to make the best of it. We we'll get this thing back looking, looking pretty good again because at one time it looked really, really nice. And now it looks really, really bad. to let alcohol spray into your eyes. Mercy. <laughs> All right, so this. Natalie is working here taking off our old SAR Trail decals because we have uh, a whole mount system that our friend Vey made for us that's going to go over here and cover this window and then we're going to mount uh, rotopacks to it. Uh, that thing was damaged a little bit in shipping but we're trying to get it fixed so we can um, get it used and then get it off the powder coat and and so on. All right, so we got half of the roof done. Looks pretty good. Got one of the windows cleaned up pretty good from the old Star Trail decals. By the way, we got a new logo coming out. We're not going to unfold it yet. We're not going to show it yet, but we're, we're in the process of kind of redoing our trail again. So we got a new logo. We're really excited about it. We've been working on it for years and years and years. We've had it designed for a couple of years now, just waiting until we could really get back to putting out regular content again, which is right around the corner, I hope. We'll see. But the Hummer's looking really good. We're going to get this thing some serious TLC. Let me show you another thing we got to do. So Natalie, if you could come right around here. So we had this snorkel put on by a company of no name, I'm not going to name them, but in Parker, Colorado. And not a good place. Never, don't, just don't take your 4x4 to anywhere in Parker, Colorado, you'll probably be okay. So this bracket here that holds the snorkel up to this A pillar, where they drilled the holes, you can see this top one hits the door. Terrible. Horrible. They did it all wrong. They didn't have the bracket lined up right. So now every time you close the door, you're taking away your paint and your primer, and eventually you're gonna rust out your door. So we're gonna see if Psycho Fabrication, if Randy can get this fixed for us, maybe change these out to something that's more beveled flat, that's like a hex or a star. Not sure, but there's something that can be done to make this work. And then also the antenna that this snorkel kit came from, it's rusted out right here. This bolt that holds this little rubber antenna down. So we're gonna get that replaced with something stainless. And then we're gonna take this thing off, this forward pointing inlet for this snorkel, and we're gonna put on a pre-filter. So we're gonna order that pre-filter that we can put it on here and filter everything before it gets into here. Because right now this just accepts, you know, has like a circular motion, so it's supposed to spin out water. But it just gets full of dust and dirt and who knows what kind of stuff. So we're gonna get a pre-filter before it gets to our air filter. Big pluses. 
Our initial plan was to keep the stock bumper and install our winch with the Schwartzy hidden winch mount. But with the intercooler, transmission cooler, and then throw in the winch, we were just out of real estate. There was no space. So we purchased a Thor parts bumper and then made it more aggressive looking. The rear bumper is a move bumper that Randy with Psyker Fabrication modified. He added the off-road light, a swing out tire carrier, a filler neck for the auxiliary fuel tank, and he also installed the factory backup camera. Pretty sweet bumper. We are very excited to have the auxiliary fuel tank. Additional fuel and no loss of ground clearance or departure angle is awesome. We also made a new vent cover for the rear door. This allowed for the spare tire to sit a little bit closer to the door and allowed for an improvement in the pre-filter or the dust filter that's in the back there. The shelving system is a great upgrade for our clothing, our storage, and our freezer. There are a few things to get done on our Hummer still, like, you know, get it running, but that'll have to wait. Thanks a lot.